So now more than ever, I have noticed a tremendous, a massive and a huge increase in the demand for creative entrepreneurship. And by creative entrepreneurship, I mean, I have noticed a huge increase in the demand of both the services and skills of freelancers. So in this video, I just want to talk about some of the things that I believe any freelancer or someone who is going into freelancing would need to know or understand before going full time into freelancing. So I'll call this the basics of freelancing. Hey everyone, my name is Harris Kari and I am so happy to welcome you all back to my channel. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Harris Kari. I'm a creative entrepreneur. That's what I call myself these days. I'm a creative designer, video editor, recently 2D animator and a lot of other things. So yeah, basically you can call me a freelancer. I've been into the whole freelancing thing for I think about three to four years right now. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to share all the experiences that I've had over the past years with you guys in this video just to try and help some of you guys that are trying to go into freelancing or that are already freelancers that are having some issues along the way but yeah it doesn't have to be an issue it could also be that you just want to upgrade your freelancing and everything so without wasting much of your time i think let's just go ahead and bounce into the video so first of all let's understand what freelancing is so let me try and explain this in the easiest way possible Freelancing is a contract based profession where the person that is a freelancer instead of just following the traditional 9 to 5 hours of work instead decides to use their skills or expertise to work with their clients. Meaning they offer their services to their clients and their clients could range anywhere from an individual all the way up to a company. So I hope that didn't confuse you because that is kind of the easiest way that I thought freelancing could be explained. So the freelancer is that person that does all that that I explained. So here are the steps that I believe every freelancer needs to know in order to start or maybe excel in their business. So the first step is just start. Yeah, I know that might sound a little bit obvious and maybe even somehow stupid or crazy to some people, but as crazy as it might sound, this is one step that most people have a very difficult time getting through. You know, sometimes or maybe most times, starting something tends to be a little bit more difficult than people realize. You might have something you've always wanted to do, but you keep on saying, I'll start tomorrow. And tomorrow you say, I'll start tomorrow. You just keep on saying the next day, the next day, the next day. And uh, what you end up doing is not starting at all. And on that same note, as the saying goes, failing to plan is like planning to fail. We need a very thorough and well sketched out plan in order to start, but don't let that plan stop you from starting. Well, I know it might sound a little bit complicated, but just put one on one together. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, don't you worry about a thing because I am going to share everything that I believe you need to know in order to start in this video. So the second step is finding a niche. And I've come across people who kind of found that word a little bit confusing or maybe not that clear. So anyway, a niche is basically like a category or maybe a kind of scope that you choose to pick, you know, let's say in school, maybe there's a subject and there are topics under the subject. So the subject might be the niche and topics can also be sub niches of that subject. So a niche is basically like you finding a subject that you want to focus on. Maybe, you know, a skill that you want to focus on for people to know you around. And one of the easiest or basic ways that I believe you can start is by focusing on something you already have some kind of knowledge about. Maybe you might have a little bit of skill in graphics design, maybe web designing. You could even have a skill in copywriting so you could help bloggers. You could have maybe a skill in photography, skill in videography. It depends on whatever you can do. You don't have to have all the knowledge of everything in your head before you start. You could actually start with just one skill. All you need to do is find that niche that you want to cover. And still on the topic of niches, this is one hint that I don't think I've ever shared with anyone anywhere. As I made the example of a subject being the niche and topics under the subject being sub niches, finding micro niches under the main niche and focusing on them gives you a competitive advantage and it provides you with the best type of audience or clients you would ever get. So the people that would be interested in this kind of thing won't really have that interest in other stuff around that same niche. So you see, you have focused on that and they know you for that only. But with time, you could actually expand into other stuff within that same niche too. One way you could find those micro niches is look at the big niches that people are already talking about. 
then focus on the little gaps between what the people are offering the clients and what the clients are really demanding from them. That little gap gives you an opening. You could be that person that solves that small problem for those people that are always complaining about that thing. Don't think that just because you focus on a micro niche, you won't get enough clients. No, when you're just starting, don't focus on the number of clients. Focus on developing your skills and the quality of your work, which you could then use as a portfolio to invite even more clients to your business. And I call that method of finding micro niches, the think big and go small method. Think outside the box to all the possibilities of things that you feel you know you can do or maybe you can learn in order to offer it to your clients as a business. So here are some few examples. Let's say you are a graphics designer and you just want to focus on corporate companies. So you could just start with small companies, maybe small businesses that have events. So you could just collect and create their banners and put it up there maybe on your page or their page or anywhere. So any other potential client that you get that you want to show that to, you could actually just send that banner to them. So they too can offer you that same type of business. So you could create another banner for them, have it on your portfolio, build a portfolio where you could show other potential clients that come. So eventually you could get to start creating banners for bigger businesses and also bigger bigger corporations and if you like from there you can expand and start doing for other more businesses and if it's for the health sector you could also be focusing on hospitals clinics dentists and every other business like that and another example might be you are a social media manager so you just want to focus on restaurants so you could be managing a lot of restaurants instead of just managing any kind of Instagram page or maybe any kind of social media page that someone offers you. So you could just say you focus on restaurants, maybe you focus on hotels that you manage their social media accounts. So that those are just kind of examples that I just wanted to share with you guys. So let's just go ahead and move to number three, learn a skill. Well, I don't think I need to say that much in this one because I've already explained almost everything in finding a niche. So you just go ahead and learn a skill. Find a skill that you believe you want to learn more about, something you already know, that you just want to upgrade your knowledge on. Learn that skill. Some people might think this is difficult, but it's not. It all depends on you. Do you really want to learn this? Because if you have the passion to learn, you would definitely learn. And a very good recommendation for that could be Skillshare. Skillshare is a platform where you can find video-based courses that you can learn almost everything about everything on this earth so you can just go ahead and check skillshare edx and udemy are also almost the same as skillshare so you could also use them they're also good recommendations and finally you could use youtube youtube is also a very good recommendation where you could find free videos from people or also if you're someone who prefers to read than to watch videos you could also read blogs read books read articles about all these things that some people have already written so that would help you too number four choose your platform so when it comes to choosing your platform i think it's up to you to decide what kind of platform or maybe what kind of audience on that platform would really be interested in the kind of service that you offer let's say you offer picture form content or maybe kind of videos you know a little bit of short videos what kind of platform do you think would be best for you it could be instagram it could be facebook it could be maybe uh, LinkedIn. It depends on the kind of content too, if it's also like a professional or maybe kind of corporate kind of thing. So it depends on you. You just choose what kind of platform and audience is best for your kind of service. So that would help you in reaching even more of those kind of audience on the certain platform that you decide. If you do 15 seconds to 30 seconds, nine to 11 aspect ratio kind of videos, it could be TikTok. It could be Instagram Reels, it could be uh, LinkedIn Stories, Twitter, Fleets, you know, it depends on what kind of platform or service you offer. So it's up to you to decide what kind of platform you want to target. Number five, find your audience. So finding your audience might be a little bit difficult, you know, it depends on the kind of content that you create, the kind of service that you offer. Or let's say you offer graphics design, video editing, or maybe animation. Well, I keep referencing those things because these are some of the things that I actually do as a freelancer. So yeah, finding an audience might be a little bit difficult, you know, depending on the kind of service that you offer, the kind of uh, thing that you do. But I'll tell you this, the best way to find your audience is for you to share your work with as much people as you can. Create a portfolio, as I said, build maybe an Instagram page, a Facebook page. It depends on what kind of social media platform you prefer. Create that portfolio, share with as much people as you can, show them what you do so they know, yeah, you have the skill. And also starting out, you would have to be the one sharing with people. But along the way, when people are kind of used to seeing your work, they would be sharing with other people. But I always advise you to 
share with people as much people as you can that you know would help you share you might not know the kind of people that want your work or maybe need your work in the first place when you start but eventually as people share with you you would have interactions with people or engagements with people that maybe kind of dig your work you dig and that brings us to number five pitch your business although i'm not really a fan of that according to one of the books that i've read and i am really in love with the win without pitching manifesto so in that book they kind of go against pitching your business but i would say if you're just starting you can go ahead and pitch your business to people but along the way when you go you know when you grow big and stuff like that you should stop pitching a business because when you do that people want to manipulate or use you because when you're pitching your business you kind of sound desperate but you know when you're starting you might as well be desperate but you know as you're growing you kind of lose that desperation and have more focus on growing your business than maybe getting the business from clients so i think i would say if your business has grown to a certain limit maybe pitching your business won't really be the word for it well what i call mine is building a network you have conversations with people you let them know what you do but not in a pitchy kind of way you know when you are pitching you're kind of showing them that you need the business but when you're kind of having conversations in a network kind of way you know people just believe that yeah this person knows what he's doing they know what they're doing so maybe let's try giving them this business and see what they can do so i believe building a network is more of uh, the professional term i would say but pitching your business is when you're just starting so you have to you know know when to start building a network instead of just pitching your business to clients or potential clients and this brings us to the last one which i believe is kind of like the best if you really want to take your business seriously and that is learn as you go so another word for that is upgrade as you go as you go you know you grow your business as you're doing this having more clients always try to invest more in yourself learn more skills this step is really one of the most important ones if you really want to grow your business because if you don't learn more or upgrade your business you would really be left behind you know as the world is still advancing you will just be left behind so as you make more money in your business try and buy courses around what you do or maybe what you want to learn watch as much videos as you can read books just search for anything that could help you in what you're doing and upgrade because as time moves forward and people learn new things and you're left with just what you know back then you would be obsolete in no time so please try as much as possible to always upgrade and learn more in what you do always add new skills you know you could add new skills it's not just just because you know this you could just stick you would just have to stick to this no you could learn as much skills as you can and along the way i would advise you to always try and get more people to help you hire more people you know that should be another step but i think because i've already reached the end of the video try and get more people to help you as you upgrade yeah it could be part of this step because it's all part of the upgrade i think we'll have a dedicated video about you know hiring or maybe getting new people to join you or maybe to just help you with the work you're doing because that is kind of the process that i am in right now so yeah but you know anyway question of the day let me know what kind of service you offer or maybe what kind of service you want to start offering you know if you haven't yet started and guys let me know if there's any other step that you feel needs to be talked about in this video and also maybe if i missed anything and let me know which of them on that list was your best you know let me know if you want to add something on the list so we could make another video for that and that being said i'll see you guys in the very next video this step really is one of the most important ones if you really want to grow your business because when it comes oh no, no no they instead decide to use their skills or expertise <laughs> what number are we and tomorrow you say i'll start tomorrow the next day the next day now nah? now nah?